hope I didn't break this. Um, I'm going to greet you like my dad. Uh, my dad used to do this in every service that he ever was in. And he always said, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what I grew up with, was that greeting to the church. I greet you in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. And there's, my heart's just really full. I've been looking at this scripture for a long time. I, uh, I had it underlined, apparently somebody else preached it, and I kind of underlined different things. And uh, I kept going, it's, I just keep going back to it. I keep <coughs> finding it. Um, I couldn't find it, and then all of a sudden I found it again. So I just keep going back to it. Um, it's Luke 12, 35 through 40. And I'm getting old. So I'll put these on. Luke 12, 35 through 40. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamp burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may be open to the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants who the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at a table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or the third and finds them awake, Blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would, have not, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. The first words there are action. And um, one of the verses I did find was uh, Exodus 12, 11, And it said, And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's. This was symbolic because the, the men in those days and, and the Arabs still to these days Wear, wore a long tunic and they had a belt and um, if they were to run or you, we women understand that when we have long dresses on you you, can't, you don't you know you can't walk very fast so if they were supposed to run somewhere it always they would pull them up and tie the sash around it so that they could run and so this was a very symbolic thing of um, that they left Egypt in the middle of the night. Uh, it, it depicts a man who's on the run, who's running. And so it also, so action, how many of you guys have seen action in a war or in a service? There had been, my dad was in World War II, he saw action. Um, what I came up with was when you're in a war, you're in a war with the enemy. You have to stay dressed for action. You have the, the, the servicemen have their uniform on, ready to go at a moment's notice. And they always have their guns with them at a moment's notice. Because they're ready to fight the enemy. It's action. Um, and... In Ephesians 6, 14 through 18, it says, when we go to war, we're fighting an enemy of our soul. This is not an enemy that we can see. It's not always an enemy that we can touch. 
but he's an enemy of our soul. And we have to stay ready for action for all those attempts that he has on us. And he, he's, in, he's in business, ladies and gentlemen. He's in business to take your soul so you don't make it to heaven. So you have to stay ready for action. And to be able to stay ready for action, you need to put on the whole armor of God. And that's in Ephesians uh, 6. Um, I said 14 through 18, but I'm going to read it from 10. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And those are schemes. They're not always, they're not nice schemes. These are schemes to destroy your soul, to destroy you, and to make sure you don't go to heaven. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, everything that you know to do, you stand firm. And then stand, therefore, having fastened the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as your shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all flaming darts of the evil ones, or the evil one. You gotta have that shield. You gotta have a shield of faith. You gotta put it on. You gotta carry it because it's something that's gonna help you fight the evil one. To all those darts and all those schemes that he he throws against you, that shield of faith will stop them. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which the Word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To the end, keep alert with all perseverance. So we've got to stand. we got to take on all those. we got to take on that armor. We can't go anywhere. Don't want to get up out of bed in the morning without putting on clothes to go out. That's how you ought to be with everything else. You ought to put on your shield, your hat, your helmet, your belt of righteousness. You need to put those on every day. It's a daily thing. I don't want to go out of the house without it. And how do you do that? You do that by reading God's Word, which is the light that will show you how to walk, how to do everything. It's the light for your feet in this dark world. And you got to put it in your heart. I'm not, I don't do real good about memorizing. I never have been. So I just kind of read it over and over and over and over and over. And, and I, I get it into my heart. And that's where it needs to be. Because when you're in a, a situation where it's, you need something, you can bring that scripture to verse, uh, that scripture to mind, and you can say, look, enemy, I gave the, some ladies uh, some scriptures that tell what the Lord thinks of them, how the Lord sees them. And I told them every time the enemy comes at them, I told them to get that, those scriptures out and point to it and read it to the enemy saying, no enemy, this is what God thinks of me. You, you are nothing. 
You're not scaring me because this is what God thinks of me. This is how God sees me. And that's what you need to do with this word. You need to put it into your heart and into your mind and into your soul. And you can stand when the enemy comes against you because you've got scripture. You've got the sword of truth in your hand. And you can tell him, get thee behind me, Satan. Because he can't come up against God's word. He can't fight it. He knows God's word because he can read it to you. But he doesn't really know what it means because he doesn't live by it. But you can live by it and you can fight him with God's word. And then you also with prayer. I don't want to I don't want to go out of my house without prayer, without praying. Do I have to pray a long time? No, I don't. I don't always pray a long time. Sometimes I do. But sometimes it's just, Lord, just put a hedge of protection around me today and be with me and help me. Amen. But I don't want to leave my house without praying. And then you need to whisper. And then you need to listen to God, what God tells you to do. Sometimes the, the Lord will tell you to do things because he knows you're in danger and you're not realizing it. He tells you things for your own good. And sometimes I don't listen to him and sometimes I get hurt. And sometimes things don't turn out the way I want them to because I didn't listen to him. But when you listen to him and he tells you something, do it. Don't fight him. Do it. Because I found out that when I do what he tells me to do, I end up a whole lot better. And then the second thing is keeping the lamp burning. And um, this is in Matthew 25. 7 through 13. This is the story of the parable of the ten virgins. Um, I don't, I'm sure everyone's heard the story. I've heard it 10,000 times. So we got to keep our lamp burning. So the, the, there were ten virgins. Five of them were wise. Five of them weren't wise. They had gone, they were chosen to, to, to be a bride, to be a bride, a bridegroom. And I read that um, in those days, um, the groom, the bridegroom, would be at his house and his um, groomsmen or his best friends and stuff they would walk him over to where they were having the ceremony. And it was usually in the evening time, and they would have the ceremony, and when it was over, they would all go to his house for a, um, a, a banquet. And so while I don't know how long it would be that the bride and her family and friends were waiting on him, but... Um, they were at the back of the house, waiting on her, back wherever they were having the ceremony. So the five virgins that were ready, they had trimmed their lamps, and they had brought all the extra oil they needed. The five other virgins, they were too busy with daily living to go to the store and buy that extra oil that they needed to bring with them. So they, they got there with no extra oil. They were too busy. They didn't think about it. But the five other virgins, they thought about it. They knew that they might be waiting a long time. They had no idea when the bridegroom was coming. They just knew he was coming. And so they were ready. So, um, the, so the oil 
became exhausted. They became exhausted. They took a nap. They fell asleep. They took a nap. But when they woke up and the oil was going down, apparently what they do is um, they have it in a, a little dish and they have the little wick and it burns. And when it burns, it gets dim, so they have to um, clip off. They have to trim it and then they pour more oil, more oil over it. That's what I read. They pour more, more oil over it. And that brings it back to life or brings it uh, brighter. And so um, when it came time, uh, the bridegroom was getting ready to come. Those five virgins didn't have the oil that they needed. And the other ones that were smart, they weren't going to share theirs because then they wouldn't have enough for when he actually did come. So they went to the store to get more. And while they were gone, the bridegroom came. And when they got back, the door was shut. The, the bridegroom shut the door after he walked in. And those other, the five that were um, too lazy or too busy to go get their extra oil, they came, the door was shut, and they knocked on the door. They knocked, and they said, let us in. And he said, no. No. You aren't ready. I don't know you. I don't know you. So they didn't keep their lamps burning. Their lamps went out. They weren't ready to meet the bride, bridegroom. You keep your light burning through the same thing that I just talked about on action. You keep your light burning through prayer, through reading your word, reading the word of the Lord, from putting it into your heart and listening to what the Holy Spirit has to say to you. Don't be like those virgins that were too lazy to go get that extra. Keep your light burning until the Lord comes and you get to hear those words when you go through the door that I know you. Come on in. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come on in. Be ready for that day when that happens. I'm ready. I am ready. So, number three was waiting. And in 2 Peter 3.12, it says, Waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God. The servants were waiting for the master's return. Uh, apparently, he had been at a wedding, and they didn't know when he was going to return. But they were staying ready in expectation that their master would return. And so they kept the lights burning, they kept everything going because they didn't know when he was gonna come. And being a servant like that, they didn't, you know, if they had gone to bed and didn't wait up for their master, they could have gotten a beating, uh, sold. So they knew that they needed to be ready and waiting just waiting for the for their master to, to uh, return. They trimmed their lamps. They made sure they had enough oil. And that's what we need to do also. We need to wait. I know waiting is some of the hardest thing to do. Um, I hate waiting. I'm waiting to go to Phoenix. We're going to Phoenix in a couple of weeks to see our son. He's getting ordained with the Assemblies of God. And I get to see my grandbaby. And I'm waiting, but I'm not waiting very patiently because I want to go. I want to go see my grandson and my son and daughter-in-law. But um, I'm waiting. It's not easy. 
And sometimes that's what it is about the Lord coming. It's waiting on Him. We don't know when He's coming. But we have to be waiting and ready and full of expectation that He could come in the next hour. Waiting with expectancy that He's coming in our next breath. We have to have our hearts ready and waiting. And um, how we do that also is through the same thing, prayer, meditating on the Lord, uh, reading your Bible, putting it in your heart, and listening to the Holy Spirit. That's how we do it. That's how we wait. That's how we wait on, on His coming. Um, there are times right now, I just want to say, even come, even so, come Lord now. Because there's so much that's going on that the waiting on him to get here can be pretty hard sometimes. Are you ready for him to come? I am ready for him to come. The fourth thing was awake. Matthew 24, 42 says, stay awake for you do not know what day your Lord is coming. Matthew 24, 46 says, Blessed is the servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. The ten virgins fell asleep. Five of them were ready when he came and five of them weren't. Which one are you going to be? Are you going to be ready and waiting? Full of action? Or are you going to be asleep and miss out? on the Lord when he returns? Are you going to miss out? Again, don't let God return and find you sleeping. But let him find you <coughs> awake and ready to go. You also do this again through prayer, reading God's word and listening to the Holy Spirit. The number five was ready. And they all just kind of blended together, waiting, awake, um, action. They all kind of blended together. So number five is ready. Luke 12, 40, you must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And so you just need to be prepared. Um, there's a lot of preppers um, around about. Talk to any of them. They're prepared. They're prepared for the worst. Um, some of them have, uh, I know, uh, somebody that has water in his garage that's that way up high, and it, for some reason, it, the, he had it stacked so high that the bottom ones gave out and broke. He had water all in his um, garage, flooded. That's just a funny sight. But if you if you talk to the preppers, they're prepped and ready for the worst. Um, Clark and I aren't big time preppers, but we've got a few things put back just in case. You've got to be ready. Who knows what's going to happen? you got to be ready. got to be prepared. Matthew 25, 10 says, While they were going to buy, their, um, while they were going to buy the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him and to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. And then verse 11, 12 says, The other five came and found the door shut, and they weren't ready. The bridegroom told them that he did not know them. Afterwards, the bird... Um, and then the, shoot, sorry, I screwed up there. Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, truly I say to you, I don't know you. Verse 13, watch therefore, you know neither the day or the hour. I know there was a lot of repetition, but that just seemed like that's what the Lord gave me. He just kept giving me the same things kind of over and over that we need to we need to pray 
We need to read God's word. We need to store in our hearts and our minds. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit, to what he has to say to us. Because when we do these things, we'll be ready, we'll be awake, we'll be prepared, we'll have action, we'll have it all because we have already done what he told us to do, and that was to be ready for his coming. I don't want the Lord to come back and not find me ready. I want to be ready for his return. Do I know when that return is going to be? No, but I sure do want to be ready for it. And the waiting is not always easy. The waiting can be really hard. Anytime we wait for things, it's hard. And that's what the enemy comes at us with, is because we don't know when the Lord is coming. And he fights us tooth and nail on everything. He wants to... He's the enemy of our soul, and he wants to grab us and pull us away from the Lord. Don't let that happen. Like I said, use that scripture verse and fight him with that. We don't even have to fight him. We just have to read it to him and then say, get thee behind me because you're not going to steal my joy. You're not going to steal my happiness. You're not going to steal anything from me. You're not going to steal one thing from the enemy because I want to be ready when he comes. The enemy can only steal from us what we give to him. And don't let him take it. He can't have my joy. He can't have my peace. He can't have anything of me because... I want to be ready. Do you, are, do you guys want to be ready for when he comes? Do you want to be there? Do you want to go into that marriage supper of the Lamb? You know, I'm so ready to do that because I don't want to gain any weight and I want to eat everything I want. I'm ready. I'm ready for him to come. But if he doesn't come, then I want to be prepared. I want to do everything that the Lord tells me to do. I want to listen to him. I want to know. I want to do. I got the privilege yesterday of telling Clark's great niece about it. All you have to do is ask the Lord into your heart and ask him to forgive you of your sin. I got that privilege yesterday. I want, I want to be able to do that all the time. So I want to be ready in my heart. If you're not ready tonight, all you have to do is ask the Lord into your heart. All you have to do is ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. And he will do it. He'll throw your sins as far as to the east to the west. And he'll forgive you of your sins. And he'll say, welcome. Come on. Welcome. I love you. I love you. I love you is what he'll say. And he'll forgive you of your sins. Father, I just pray tonight for these dear friends that have come. I pray, Father, that your hand will be upon each one of them, Lord. I don't know what they're going through, Father, but you do. You know their hearts, their minds, and their soul because you created them, Lord. You created each one of them that li that's in this place right now. You have created them, and you know their hearts, Lord. You know what they go through every day. You know the battles they fight, Lord Jesus. You know it, Lord. They don't even have to speak it because you know it, Lord. And I ask, Father, that you would take burdens off of hearts, Lord, 
and heal people that need healing, Lord. And I pray for those that have lost their joy and lost their peace, Lord. I pray that you would restore what the enemy has stolen from them, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name that, Father, that you would restore it to them. That you would give them back their joy, give them back their peace, Lord. I thank you for it today, Lord Jesus, because the enemy cannot have it. It's yours to give. I pray for broken hearts, Lord. Hearts that have been broken, Lord. I pray for them tonight, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would mend them because you said in your word that you are the mender of broken hearts. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you would mend that broken heart, Lord, and restore again. Restore it to fullness, Lord, and piece it back together again. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For sickness, Lord, for things that are going on in, in lives that we can't even imagine, Lord. I pray for it right now, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, as we leave this building, Lord, that you will put a hedge of protection in, around each one of them, Lord. And I thank you for it tonight, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As everyone knows, if you want prayer, 